In this video, we're going to take a deeper look at the user interface and some common things you might run into inside of Autodesk Inventor. So here I have just a simple file open from our working files directory, the hub.ipt. We're not really doing anything with this file other than just kind of taking a look at what our changes in the interface really do to it. So first, let's review a little bit of vocabulary. Here inside of the interface, we have our application menu. This is the big letter I in the upper left corner of the screen. This will open up a pull down. We can do a new or open or save, export, some other things as well. We have our quick access toolbar across the top of the screen. So here again, we have new, open, save. We have the best command ever invented, the undo command. And we have other things as well, such as material selection and appearance selection. We have the info center to the upper right, where we can do a search for different help topics. And then we have our main ribbon interface. So this is our series of tabs that we have across the top. Also inside of these tabs, we have subjugated commands broken into panels, such as the create panel, the modify panel, and this in general makes up our entire ribbon interface. Sometimes people will click on the wrong thing in here and the ribbon will act in an unexpected manner. So for instance, if I accidentally click on this button right here that says minimize to panel buttons, it actually shrinks down my ribbon a little bit. Some people like to work this way. And as you go across each one of these subjugated panel icons, they will then expand out really what's inside of that. If I click on it again, minimize to panel titles, then I just get only the words there. And I have to come in here again and kind of hover on them to find out more information. If I click it again, then it's very, very small. And I have to actually come up here and click on one of the tabs to expand it out. If I click on this again, it goes back to the full ribbon. So if you're experiencing anything like that and you want to get back to the full ribbon, just cycle through that button a couple times. Another thing that's really common, and it's unfortunate this is the only way to turn it back on, is if you accidentally turn off your model browser on the left-hand side, you just lost a crucial part of what Inventor is all about, that model history and what you can basically interpret from that left-hand side browser. The only way I repeat, the only way to get this back on is to go to your View tab, go to the Windows panel, click on User Interface, and in this flyout, you can turn your browser back on. Notice there's also the toggles in there for the View Cube, which is on the far right-hand side of the screen, and the Navigation Bar, as well as your Status Bar and your Document tabs and your right-click Marking menu. So let's turn the browser back on there, and we have our history tree for this hub reappear again. Next up, I'd like to take a look at a few of different settings available to us inside of our application. A couple ways you can get to your application options. You can go to your tools tab and you can click on application options there. You can also click on your inventor application menu in the upper left. And if you were to double click that button really fast twice, what will happen is it will shut down Inventor. So be very careful about that. If you have a slower computer, be patient, let that window fly open, and then you can go down and choose options. Now here, I can make some adjustments that I find are beneficial. So for instance, I'm not a huge fan of the My Home screen. I turn it off. That's my personal preference. If you want yours turned off, you can do it there. Otherwise, it's going to stay on. If you want to see what your next step is in a command, you can turn on dynamic prompting. That will basically tell you what your next step is while you're performing a tool such as extrusion or revolve. It'll tell you what to do next. We can also go down here and turn off our tool tips and our tool clips. Now, as a new user, it might be good to leave those turned on. But for someone like me, who is a veteran user of over 15 years of Inventor, I don't need the tool clips to tell me how to use an extrusion. So I have those turned off. Some other settings to adjust, you can put your username in here so it automatically fills out your title blocks. It automatically fills out your author piece of data about each file. You can also adjust the text appearance when you want to do that. A little bit further down, I like to change these settings here, such as physical properties. It makes your save time a little bit longer, but it keeps all your physical properties up to date when you save things. I also like to increase my undo file size. The larger your undo file size is, the more undos you can perform. The annotation scale, I'm going to up mine to one and a half. This actually will make my dimensions appear larger, so it's easier for me to read my values. And some other things you can adjust as well are on the different tabs across the top. This dialog box is stretchable, so if you want to expand that out, move it up and down and such, it is 
a box you can adjust. I'm going to go here to our colors tab next. This is our default colors that we have for the software. You can choose different colors as you go through here. As you can see, I'm currently on this color scheme with a background image, and that's the current one being chosen. However, I could choose a one color option. If I hit apply, it's going to adjust my background. I can do a gradient option as well, or just stick with that background image. You can choose different ones here as well. There are some that work better if you're colorblind to reds and greens, but for the most part, that's our default one there. If I go to my display tab, I can control how my visual display looks when I start every file inside of Autodesk Inventor. Right now, it's using a document setting appearance control. I like to actually have my own appearance settings set every time I come into a file. I'm gonna click on use application settings and then click the settings button to define what those need to be. So every time I come into a file, I want my visual style to be shaded with edges. It's a little bit more traditional for me, so I like using this one. I can also turn on things like shadows. I don't recommend doing that unless you have a very powerful system and you're not working on very large assemblies. Turning on shadows can really slow down your processing time. I'll choose OK just for that small change there. You can also adjust your transition time, which allows you to very quickly rotate your model, how quickly that takes place. You can increase your frame rate, so you actually have a little bit better graphical quality with a higher frame rate. Those settings for frame rate will not adjust until you reboot Inventor. We also have other controls as well, such as how your zoom behavior works, if you want to have your 3D origin indicator and axis labels turned on, and your look at behavior from when you're using the interface look at tool. If we go to the next tab up here, hardware, I usually run at performance level. If you are running on a very old or slow computer, you might need to use conservative or software graphics. However, if you're using either of these two down here, you might run into some severe graphical issues, and it's best to run on performance with a certified workstation. If you can run quality, great, but it's gonna slow you down a little bit. Now we have other settings in here we can adjust as well. So if I go up to prompts or to drawing, you can see all these different types of settings we can adjust. We're not gonna spend time right now going through all of them, because if you want to learn more about each and every one of these, you can simply go to the tab you're on and click on this help icon in the lower left. That will take you to the help system to tell you a little bit more about each and every one of these different types of settings. And a lot of these settings will not make sense until we get more through the course. So for now, I'll choose OK. And we'll kind of talk about those different visual styles that I had selected. You remember I chose shaded with edges for every time I open a file. Well, what does that actually look like in here? If I go to the view tab, I can click on different visual styles. So right now I'm on shaded. Here is shaded with edges. It's a much more defined edge. I can actually see where the fillets actually kind of break into the different parts of the geometry. I can also do shaded with hidden edges. We also have a wireframe mode. Now some of these modes become much more beneficial when you get into larger pieces of work, when you get into large assemblies, or if you're trying to take a nice screenshot for a catalog or for a assembly manual and you don't want to have all the busyness going around on the screen. For that kind of work, I recommend changing your background to a blank white before you take your screen image. We also have a monochrome here and a watercolor, which I don't know why you'd ever want to use watercolor, but it is in there. We also have a sketch illustration and a technical illustration which is actually a little bit more enhanced one now. This is a newer one to Inventor 2016, and it's actually quite nice. But again, every time I open a file, I want to see it in this manner, shaded with edges. One last tip I'll leave you with is if you find there's a command you use a whole heck of a lot, you can go to your ribbon and you can right click on it, such as fill it here, and you can add things to your quick access toolbar, or you can move things to your expanded panel, which is a panel that is subjugated even further below. So if I click on modify here, you can see I have a few commands which aren't really used all that often. Let's say I don't use delete face that much. I can right click on that and move it below to the expanded panel. What if there's a set of commands you don't even use at all? Maybe I don't use any of these freeform tools. At the end of your ribbon, you can click on this little down arrow and you can actually turn off entire panels to make your interface a little bit more simplified. For me, I'm going to leave mine pretty much stock here throughout the course, but feel free to adjust that on your own.